And in the season finale, Perry tells Della all about the fact that it's actually Camilla Nygaard pulling the strings. And Della is in complete denial. She just can't believe that her so-called friend would do that. In the middle of their argument, Paul comes in with the piece of mail that Clara snagged from Phipps's house. And at that point, Della kind of has to believe it. Perry wants to take all this information to Berger because the judge is ruling the next day, but she says, you can't. He won't work with us. He's being blackmailed. And now we all know who by. Della is pretty hesitant to tell everybody what the blackmail revolves around, but she does, having everybody swear that they won't let it leave the room. The next day, Perry heads to the courthouse, but he actually meets with the judge. He wants to get a sense of which way he's ruling, and the judge doesn't give him any information. Perry makes the plea to the judge that to give the boys a public defender wouldn't be fair. It's not like Perry wants to be completely scot-free from this. He knows that he should have some kind of punishment, but he wants to stay on as the boy's lawyer. And the judge kind of gives him a side eye and then walks off. Short while later, everybody meets in the judge's chambers, and he admits that he was prepared to declare a mistrial. But he's reconsidered. The trial will continue. The gun will be admissible, but with no mention of how it was obtained. Because they don't want to give the location of where they found the gun, they're going to tell everybody that it was found in the Hooverville that the boys lived in. Once the trial is finally concluded, Perry's going to jail for four months. When they walk out of the judge's chambers, Della is shocked that Perry just gave into that so easily. She thinks that four months is really tough, but Perry reassures her, Della, it's fine. This will buy us some time to get those pictures that Nygaard has on Berger. And in order to get those pictures, they're going to need Phipps' help. So they head to his house, where he's dealing with his wife, who is going through withdrawal. Della, Perry, and Paul sneak into his house, and they call for him. They tell him that they know it was him, they have all this information, and he folds like a cheap suit. Perry tells him, we don't want to get you in trouble. We want your help. Help us get those pictures. And Camilla's sense about Phipps was right. He hasn't really been liking working for her. So he kind of jumps at this opportunity, figuring that if Camilla Nygaard goes down, he's not going to have a job anyway, so what does it matter? He's able to sneak over to her place, grab all of the photos, and while he's almost caught, he's not. He's able to get out of there with all the goods. Everything Camilla Nygaard has on just about anybody, which is a lot of picks. He wants to give it to Perry, but the next day is the final day in court. The prosecution points out that they found the gun where they found it. They make their closing statements, and now it's up to the jury. When Perry gets back from court, he has a note waiting for him from Phipps, saying, I have the goods we need to meet. The two meet up on the side of the street. Phipps gives him everything he's got. And when Perry gets back to the office, Della and him comb through it all, and they notice that there are some familiar faces in these photos. Themselves. Nygaard had pics of Perry on a horse with Teddy. He's got pics of Della with Anita at the boxing match. These two realize just how much dirt Camilla Nygaard had on the entire town. So the next day, they take all the pics of Berger to him, saying, here's everything. The pics, but also the negatives. Then they also hand over all the information that points to Camilla Nygaard being the puppet master in the Brooks McCutcheon murder. Berger tells them that he is thankful for what they did, truly. But this entire city has been reminded of this murder every day from the newspapers and from the radio. He just can't let the boys walk. Somebody did kill Brooks McCutcheon. Somebody pulled the trigger. So they come to a plea deal. They go back and forth, but what Perry accepts is that Matteo Gallardo will agree to plead guilty. In return, he's going to get 30 years, but no parole. Rafael Gallardo, he's going to walk. Ultimately, it is the boys' decision, so Perry and Della take the decision to both Matteo and Rafael, and Matteo agrees to it. He knows how difficult this is going to be because he has a young wife and a young child, but he's also giving his brother hope for a future. Perry and Della then tell Berger the news that they've accepted the plea deal, and Berger does something that he really enjoys, firing Milligan. Berger didn't really like the way that Milligan found the gun. He also hasn't really liked the way that he's conducted himself. Really cocky, really arrogant. So he enjoys telling them that they reached a plea deal. And Milligan can't understand why they would do that. He feels like he completely won this case. But as Berger reminds him, you don't have to understand it. You're not the DA. I am. The next day at court, the judge announced to everybody that a plea deal has been reached. Matteo Gallardo stands up. He apologized to the family of Brooks McCutcheon. And then he is sent away to San Quentin. Rafael is freed. 
Both Perry and Berger meet the media outside. Berger makes the statement that justice was served, and it seems like a win-win for everybody. Everybody except Matteo Gallardo, but then again, he did shoot and kill somebody. Perry even says that it doesn't seem like a loss. Seems like he got the best deal for his client. And he gives all the credit in the world to Della, saying that she was the real rock star in this case. And the press has really latched on to Della. But they've also noticed something, that she's been out and about with Hamilton Berger. The press assumes that the two are dating. And Della doesn't dispel these myths at all, because she wants to keep their sexuality a secret. Now, while Perry didn't thank him publicly in the press, he goes over privately to thank Paul. But Paul lets him know that that'll be the last case he's working for Perry. This current one just did a number on him. He risked way too much for just simply not enough. What he's going to do is now go work for Melville Perkins. Perkins was impressed with the fact that Paul kept his word. He stayed away when Perkins was going through his trial. And he decided that he needed a guy that was loyal, true to his word, and had Paul's certain set of skills. What he wants to do is build a park and a pool in the African-American community. But in order to do that, he's going to need some big wigs downtown to agree to it. And that means finding dirt on them. So he's going to hire Paul to go to city councilmen and dig up any information he can that they can use to better their own community. That night, Perry and Della celebrate. They're celebrating the quasi-win, but they're also celebrating Perry's last night out because the next day he has to head to jail. The next day, though, before he does head off to the tink, he has to make amends with somebody, Ginny Ames. He goes to the stables. He apologizes. He explained what happened. And he tells her that he's going to be gone for a while because, you know, he's a bad boy. and He's off to prison. And to his surprise, she asks, well, how long are you out? Because even after that little blow up, Ginny still wants herself a little Perry Mason. Perry then heads to the courthouse and Pete goes with him. Pete does give him some good advice. Don't tell anyone you're a lawyer. You're going to have everybody who claims they're innocent at your cell wanting you to look at their case. Just lay low and get through it in four months. You'll be all right. Perry's then processed. He gets his cell and he hunkers down for the next four months. As for Della, she went to go visit Camilla Nygaard. She wanted to tell her off because she really looked up to Camilla, a single woman who had made herself a powerhouse in the city of Los Angeles. But it turns out the way she was doing things was dirty and criminal. Camilla tries to defend her actions, but Della ain't having it. And she also didn't come alone. It wasn't like Berger was just going to let Camilla Nygaard get off scot-free. So she ends up getting arrested. As for Lydell, well, he had some criminal activity, but he was smart about it. He fled to Japan, and he's not going to be coming back for a long, long time. As for Holcomb, he ended up burning that boat. It was a money pit anyway. But this story does end on a happy note. Rafael Gallardo got into art school, and he's thriving. And that's the end of Perry Mason Season 2. Thank you so much for getting this part of the recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit thumbs up if you like this recap. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. Let me know if you think there's going to be a season three. I sure hope so. But then again, I don't know anyone who watches this show other than me. Be nice in the comments section. And if you're feeling like it, I do have merch and a Patreon and, you know, a bunch of other different ways you can give me money to show support for the channel.